let alone uh, asking me to fast until the next day. I, I don't think I can do it. But some of the companions were so eager to imitate the Prophet ﷺ in every aspect, and he forbade them. So is the hukm here general or specific? Umm Salama asked. When you say that whoever lowers his garment to trail behind, uh, Allah will punish him, etc. What about women? Why? Because she have asked the Prophet ﷺ before about a woman who prays in only uh, izar and dirr uh, and khimar. Uh, 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 he said, if it was long enough to cover the feet, so that is understood. So the feet for women is our according to the vast majority of the Muslim scholars. The question is, if you want us to lower or not to lower our izar and to lift up our garments, then our feet will show. He said, no, this is only for men. As for women, your khina shibran. Here is a shibr, a hand span. It's like 25 centimeters. It depends on how big is your hand span, OK? OK, 10 inches, maybe. But she was also concerned. She said, Ya Rasulullah, even if they lower their abaa, their garment, their izar, a hand span, as they are walking, their, the top of their feet may show they will be kicking their abaa and so on. So th this is really amazing. What we see now is the competition of shortening women's clothes. To the extent that you see some women wearing almost nothing in the street, there is, you know, in some countries, the fashion is to show their underclothes, underwear, you know. This is how bad it is. And these modest women, represented by Umm Salama radiallahu anha, is worried about what if, you know, only one hand span? Our feet may show. So the Prophet ﷺ even said, فَيُرْخِينَهُ ذِرَاعًا What is a zira? A zira is from the shoulder to the end, the tip of the toes. That is 70 centimeters approximately. That's an arm's length. This is for women. And what happens is, as they're walking, يُطَهِرُ بَعْضُهُ بَعْضًا You see, what is prescribed for women is to lower their garment and to wear long clothes. And also for the sleeves, likewise, it is best to have cuffs and buttons or elastic band so that whenever you are in the market, whenever you are driving perhaps, whenever you're selling or you're buying, whenever you're performing tawaf and you are pointing towards the black stone corner and say, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, your sleeves will not roll down and show the flesh of your arm, because this is forbidden. Allahu Akbar, raising your hands to make takbir in the salah, even if you're praying by yourself at home, this part is awra. So wearing those open sleeves will roll down and will show your awra. And that's why it is best to have an outfit, a abaa, for the prayer. You can wear it on top of your clothes, which have elastic pan here, okay? And it covers the entire body, except for the hands and the face, of course, long enough to cover the feet in order to get out of any difference of opinion to make certain that you are on the safe side when it comes to offering the prayer. There is no difference between praying in public or praying in the privacy of your bedroom, even while it is dark. Aura is aura, and it must be covered. And for men, we should do our best to follow the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ with regards to lifting up our izar so that he will not trail down beneath the ankles. And if a person does this out of vanity, oh my God, it will become very, very problematic. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to wrap it up before we take a short break.